Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this OSLC webcast, our first for 2014. And so we're going to do a update on what's new with the community, as well as give an introduction to PromCode, which is a uh, a new set or a new specification and, and a proposed TC uh, to be affiliated with the OSLC member section. Um, we'll get some more details on that uh, as we go. Let's just take a quick look at our agenda. I'm, I'm Sean Kennedy, and I will be giving you the OSLC community update. I work for IBM as the OSLC community development leader for them, and I also work very closely with the OSLC steering committee as their operations coordinator. And our, uh, our, our main speaker for today is Dr. Mikio, Mikio Aoyama from Nanzan University. He is also the chair of the PromCode Consortium. Uh, who has worked quite a bit on this specification and is uh, now in the process of contributing it to OASIS and uh, um, creating a TC to continue that work. And we'll get into prom code in, in much more detail in a few minutes. Like I said, I just wanted to take uh, a, a little bit of time here and give an update on what's going on in the community. And uh, well, let's take a look at this. Uh, pipeline of uh, TCs that are being created at OASIS. Um, as many of you know, in, uh, in June of uh, 2013, uh, a member section was created at OASIS, and this is uh, for OSLC, and this is a you know, governance and cohesion kind of body. There's a steering committee, and the steering committee has members uh, currently from uh, Boeing, Airbus, um, uh, Boeing, Airbus, uh, IBM, uh, TaskTop, and um, oh, how, how bad of me, Siemens, and, uh, and Creative Intellect Consulting. And so that's our steering committee as it stands right now, and they uh, uh, provide a direction and work on things to help grow the community and also provide some level of oversight to the various technical committees uh, to actually develop the specifications that become affiliated with the member section. So currently, we have two technical committees that are already up and running. The uh, core technical committee uh, launched in November, and the change in configuration management to TC launched in January. Uh, and we have in process right now, um, uh, we have in process right now the automation and the prompt code technical committees, uh, and TC is the term that OASIS uses, which is similar to work group at uh, other organizations. And, um, and uh, so those two are, uh, they've gone through their call for comment, and the call for participation should open soon. Uh, and that would mean you'd be able to, uh, to join, and they're looking to have their first meetings in March. So I expect some announcements from OASIS that way. And then also we are in the process of uh, putting together a requirements architecture and quality management uh, TC uh, based on the specs of those names from OSLC or OpenServices.net. And uh, hopefully they'll be able to get their first meeting uh, through all the various process uh, uh, started by June. So uh, basically a year later we'll see all the major um, or all the active work uh, on specifications from OpenServices.net, Open-Services.net will be taking place at OASIS. And so it's a fairly good uh, transition that the steering committee has uh, has led their way through. And this transition has actually, you know, let us see quite a bit of growth and participation as uh, new technical committees are have been created. We've had a number of uh, companies who have joined those technical committees to participate. So when the member section launched last year, uh, there were 21 organizations uh, uh, who co-founded it, as well as uh, the uh, Bolo Ritibi as an individual member uh, who is from Creative Intellect Consulting and on the steering committee. And uh, you know, we've had a really good uptake uh, from a number of different organizations and different fields. Uh, working uh, with the technical committees as we've started them. Uh, so fluid operations is uh, you know, in the 
in the operations space, and they, they do quite a bit of work with uh, uh, linked data already, so it seemed like it was a natural fit for them. Um, uh, to, as you'll see later, NEC has been involved in the uh, prom code work, which was based on OSLC core, but they, uh, they've also found interest in, in some of the TC work that has been started at Oasis. Um, you know, Cisco Systems has uh, you know, the household name that's joined in, a number of different uh, government organizations involved as well, and some uh, 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 certainly ongoing interest as we see across the whole community from the systems engineering field um, uh, with Method Park and uh, PTC uh, joining PCs as well. And so we actually have on the call uh, Ryan Lloyd from PTC, and I wanted to give Ryan a couple moment, moments or minutes just to uh, talk about uh, why PTC has uh, got involved at this time with the OSLC uh, technical committees at uh, OASIS. Okay, thank you, Sean. Uh, Ryan Lloyd here from PTC. So I'm a director of product management at PTC. And, uh, you know, PTC is uh, really committed to the concept of encouraging openness and interoperability across our, uh, our product platforms for product lifecycle management, as well as application lifecycle management. And so, you know, we support commercially and, and technically relevant standards through participation in various standards bodies, um, such as OASIS, ProStep, OMG. And our objective in participating in the OASIS, OSLC technical committees is really to ensure that relevant standards are developed with the full context of the product development process in mind. So ensuring suitability for uh, product lifecycle management and application lifecycle management and the intersection of those two concepts through systems engineering. And making sure that these standards incorporate key feedback and use cases from our board of customer advisors and our PTC user technical committees. So that's our goal, um, and we look forward to working with the OASIS uh, OSLC technical committees on uh, a variety of topics. Great. Th thank you so much, Ryan. And, and I think the, uh, the purpose you laid out for your involvement is exactly uh, you know, what those of us who have been involved in, in OSLC for a while now um, hoped would happen when we, when we went to OASIS. It's, uh, it's so important to have the broad perspective uh, from from different organizations and different companies, and and that helps us make sure that the specifications can be implemented uh, in a in, in the wide range of uh, software that is available. So, you know, certainly, it's very exciting news that uh, uh, PTC is involved, as uh, as it is for you know, all these other companies that have got involved. Uh, so you mentioned, Ryan, it's interesting you mentioned uh, participation at uh, OMG, and uh, certainly there's been also a lot of work happening at OMG. One of the you know, individual members of uh, OASIS uh, called Axel Reichmin, uh, he's been involved in a, a number of different OSLC technical committees, um, and he uh, and his company Connexus have been involved at OMG and in COSI as well. Um, trying to figure out how OSLC, or at least the approach to integration that OSLC has uh, has uh, been working with, may fit in in those areas as well, and uh, broader interoperability concerns, and also in the uh, model-based systems engineering based on uh, SysML and UML, those those types of standards. And so there's been quite a lot of work there. Uh, a number of folks have been involved in the uh, Crystal Project and others um, inside the uh, Artemis uh, jo uh, joint uh, undertaking from the European Union. And uh, you know, so this is giving you know, OSLC uh, visibility and I think uh, helping OSLC understand some of the needs in, in these various, uh, various areas from across these uh, communities and uh, hopefully should improve the uh, specifications as we work towards the version 3 specifications at OASIS. And um, there's also been quite a lot of progress being made at the Link Data Platform Working Group at, uh, at W3C, and that is the, uh, 
I started with a contribution of OSLC core, uh, some parts of the OSLC core spec, um, the W3C, and will be the foundation for the OSLC core version 3 specification on which, of course, the other domain specs base themselves. So um, I think they're getting uh, getting close to some more news there, and uh, so that's uh, that's very exciting. And of course, if you're an implementer, you want to make use of uh, Eclipse Leo. Well, hopefully, I I, uh, I got through that update uh, in not too much time. Uh, one other thing I just want to put on everyone's radar is Boss um, LC Connect at the ALM Forum. The ALM, ALM Forum is a is an industry conference, you know, covering a wide variety of topics, uh, agile DevOps, uh, architecture testing, the business of software. Uh, it's taking place April 1st to 3rd in Seattle, Washington, and uh, we have a number of presentations that uh, we'll touch on OSLC as well. And uh, we've, uh, we've uh, the steering committee uh, has approved a networking event on the Monday uh, before, which is the uh, uh, April. 31st, so there'll be a chance for, uh, you know, if you're there as part of the OSLC community, to mix and mingle, um, but also to engage with uh, some other folks from the conference who um, may uh, may not have been involved in the OSLC community, but uh, uh, have some interest in it and, uh, and may want to learn from your experience. So hopefully you'll be able to join us. Uh, there is a promo code that has been sent to the member section mailing list. Uh, that will get you $300 off the conference registration. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see you there, and uh, uh, you'll get a chance to, of course, hear even more about uh, prom code there, and, and probably have some updates from uh, what's going on at Oasis in that talk as well. But now on to the main show, and that's uh, uh, Dr. Mikio Aoyama from Nanzan University. Um, he has over 15 years of industry experience. Uh, managing large-scale software projects, uh, and that was all before he joined the Department of Nanzan University, uh, uh, Department of Software Engineering, as a professor. And so he has been the chair of the Prom Code Consortium, which was uh, an effort, a uh, joint research effort, uh, with IBM, Fujitsu, NEC, NTT Data, Hitachi, and Nomura Research Institute. And uh, they've developed a specification for managing uh, software uh, software supply chain for co uh, contracted delivery, and uh, has, that has been put into practice by a number of these organizations. And so, without uh, without any uh, any more waiting, I'm going to transfer control to uh, Professor Aoyama, and uh, and uh, let's all get an introduction to Promcode. Okay. Hello? Yes, hello. Hi. So, uh, thank you, Sean, and thank you for all of you to join this uh, introduction to Prom Code. So, uh, the Prom Code is an industry consortium to develop a standard which helps to exchange which mine data across the organization boundaries. So let's start what I have. So we have been working for the last two years for, to develop this standard. We also closely work with OSLC, and we now are very happy to join uh, uh, the uh, uh, member section, um, uh, the TC of the member section of uh, OASIS. So here is scenario my talk. I'll start with the challenges, also approach, and key contributions, and some of the technologies and use cases. And I'd like to also uh, invite you to uh, con col and contribute to this uh, new uh, uh, technical committee. So what I, we are looking at is uh, uh, the management of the uh, co excuse me, see. management of the contract delivery, suppose you are outsourcing your development to some country like India and other countries. So it's becoming very hard to manage 
because of the limited information to get, also you have to develop a software across the different platforms. So conventional project management is rather ad hoc, and for some of the serious, you know, the disasters, many times you may exchange or you may convert data by hand or with some tools which specific to specific to certain tools or uh, proprietary tools, so it's not generally used to define tools. Also, the, because of this project may tend to be big, so you may lack of the visibility across the uh, teams. Also, it's hard to trace back the data, especially the, the scale of the project is very large. So we come to the idea to provide standard interface which enables exchange data between different organizations while these organizations keep their management unchanged. So here is the idea. So we define so-called common resource model which defines common data model to exchange. This is based on the OCLC core and which is accessible with REST. And we also provide the tool to generate adapters which convert data from specific data model to promo code common use model. And we focus on best tools such as Excel because Excel is very common to many project managers. So we provide the converter from Excel to from code common use model which is available on Eclipse Leo. So you can freely use it. So here is a uh, uh, idea of the model. So upper side defines the model. Lower side represents concrete data used in project. And left hand side defines project management model which is common or standard across different projects. And right hand side defines OSLC resource schema so which you can use to exchange data. The key idea is we have been intensively review our real management data to identify the common part of the data which can be across uh, can be exchanged across the organizations. And we define model as a common resource model, which I ex explain later. A common resource model can be exchanged through OSLC resource schema, which is complied with OSLC core specifications. Actually, we reuse core specifications and extend some resource schema to exchange from core data. So what you need to do is just use OSLC resource schema to exchange data. So the bottom side is you may use Excel or Spectrum 2 to exchange data through this OSLC resource schema. So this is a core part of the, uh, our interface, which we call common resource model. And we have three key entities. First one is proprietary, which defines contract or scope of contract. So this is what you uh, uh, do with your outsourcers or your customers. And scope item consists of two parts. One is the work item, which is supposed to be a uh, 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 work done by some contracted partners. Also, you have a set of artifacts, which is outcome of work items. So this three key entity is the core 
entity to exchange across corporate boundaries. And these entities are managed by as a, a part as a specialization of the management item, which can be managed by change and also uh, issues are also associated with these entities. And artifacts can be measured with some uh, API, and this is a whole I idea which we can define as a model of the project management. So these models are uh, uh, mapped to OSSC resources. So here is a, a, a simple example. So suppose we have a, a, a project which consists of two functions. So these functions are developed along with the process of analysis, design, and coding. So this development as a model, as a, a, a class diagram, as a indicate below. So this model can be mapped to also C resources. So uh, this is some idea how uh, these uh, processes are mapped to certain resources. So we have a, a new uh, space from code PM which defines uh, our uh, uh, resources and this is based on the OSSC resources. And these resources are exchanged through uh, uh, as a part of the OSSC resources. So to uh, extend the resources, we provide a tool to convert from basic data uh, schema to OSU resources. And we focus on Excel as the uh, most commonly used tool. So we provide a, a prompt code an adapter for Excel, which can convert from Excel to prompt code resource and vice versa. So you can just you know, the access any different types of schema in Excel through this prompt code adapter. You may also extend this adapter to support specific tools, such as proprietary tools or common project mind tools. And one of the good things is it is very easy to use or easy to extend, uh, Define mapping rules because we use Excel as a, 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 as a, a tool to define mapping rules from Excel schema to from code resource schema. So if like this, you can just specify resource type or resource URL with Excel. So this tool can convert from Excel to promo code resource schema with this mapping rule. So it's very easy and you don't need to spe special, you know, the uh, knowledge or some, you know, the programming to extend data. So that we, uh, and this tool is uh, also available on Eclipse Leo, it's a part of the uh, uh, also see tools. And we have been conducting experiences through four use cases. We identified typical scenario to use contact delivery. First scenario is like a project consists of a number of tools. We suppose team Q and team R use different tools and Police manager needs to collect the data through standard schema. This is one scenario. And sometimes, like a customer X outsources their development to different vendors. So in this case, vendor A, vendor B may have their own tool or their own standards. So 
they don't want to change their standards. In this case, when the A or when the B can convert their uh, management data to promo code schema, so customer X can collect the progress or quality data from different vendors. And the other case is scenario three. In this case is, suppose you are the vendor C. You actually, the vendor C means the, the big company. So some team may work with customer X, or some team may customer work with customer Y. They require different management data. But you already, you, vendor C already have a, a standard inside company. So you don't want to change your management style or tool. In this case, you simply convert your management data to promo code schema, which can be converted to user X or user Y. And another one is like a, a PMO, which is another you know, the variation of scenario one, which may have different tools, uh, teams may have different tools, but PMO likes to collect information. I think we think this is a typical scenario to use from code, and also a typical scenario in the project management in context delivery. And we, as a company of the Prom Code Consortium, have been intensively you know, studied with real data to, uh, to uh, evaluate and also the, uh, to study the feasibility of the tools. And we are very confident our tools and our specification is very viable and useful to exchange data across the organization. And finally, we have been working with OSS communities. And actually, the, uh, this uh, entire interface and technology is based on OSS core. And we uh, actually use some you know, resources, like uh, uh, change management or uh, uh, other resources to exchange information for the uh, 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 management. So we are very happy to, uh, to the, uh, join a member of the uh, uh, OSC member section as a uh, promo code TC. And we are very, in, uh, we all, uh, welcome all uh, to you to contribute to uh, this TC. And just remind you, the uh, legislation will be due on the March 18th. And um, this is about the uh, uh, overview of the uh, technology. And thank you for joining with that thing. And if you are interested, uh, further information will be available at the website. Also, uh, if you are interested in the more detail about specifications, the link will be provided through OASIS is the website. So please visit the OASIS uh, promo code is the website so to get more information. And thank you very much. And if I have a question, I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Ayoyama san. A very uh, uh -huh. I think a very good overview. It's uh -huh. uh, nice and concise too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you make it uh, get the right information out there and, and do it quick. And I mm -hmm. I I think it's great that the um, mm -hmm. uh, tools of it are available through Eclipse Leo to help uh, people leverage this already. Um, and I, I did just tweet the link to, uh, where you can find the uh, mm -hmm. find the information uh, and get the uh, from Get on Leo. So um, if there are questions, you can certainly type them into the uh, chat box or uh, speak up on the phone. Um, so I, I have a uh, I have a question though, I, and um, I'm, I'm wondering how have um, the companies who were part of the PromCode consortium how have they uh, uh, been able to use this uh, uh, this specification? Do they they've tested it out? Is anyone using it uh, as part of their process right now? What's the uh, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, actually we have been conducting, you know, the, uh, uh, to apply the specification. Each company, uh, they are, so their own, you know, situations. So they applied the specifications. And some companies are, are start, you know, using some part of their tools. And we also, uh, some companies have their own tool to, uh, to uh, their project management. So they need to, you know, the, uh, have to customize their tools, and so uh, this is uh, in, uh, uh, you know, ongoing uh, status. And but we are very positive to uh, apply these tools in their companies. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, so even in the cases where uh, they're still in the process of customizing their uh, mm -hmm. their internal tools. Um, they have validated that the uh, the common resource model is yeah. the, is compatible with uh, mm -hmm. their custom project management um, oh, yes. yeah. process and uh, data. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing it. other questions from the uh, from the audience at this time. So, uh, as was as was briefly mentioned, and uh, obviously that uh, March 18th deadline, I guess that's the target for the first uh, TC meeting at Oasis. Is that, is that correct, uh, Professor Ayayama? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so that would mean that uh, to have voting rights at that uh, meeting, you would need to join, uh, uh, respond to the call for participation by the uh, a week before then, so the uh, oh, yes. the um, 11th. Yes. Uh, uh, I think on the call for um, um, Sean, this is this is Chet from Oasis. Uh, oh, hi, Chet. Hi. Yeah. How are you? Uh, Very good. I I, I'm, I, just just to, to to answer that question, I'm looking at the uh, at, at the proposed charter, which will be issued in a call for participation in the next day or so. Um, the the 18th, I believe, is the deadline date to join uh, and be eligible to have voting rights, and the I first see. meeting is um, uh, scheduled for March 26th Japanese time, uh, and that'll be March 25th uh, U.S. time. Okay, excellent. So you have an extra week. And uh, I guess in a similar timeline, the automation uh, TC will be uh, will be uh, having their first meeting. That's correct. They have their first meeting scheduled, and their call for participation will be going out um, about the same time. Theirs is on March 25th, first meeting. Okay, excellent. And, um, and on a slightly different topic, um, back to the, the LEO contribution. Um, but this is uh, Steve Spiker, by the way. Um, there is a, a sample in there. It doesn't just expose the data from Excel and provide mapping. Um, but there's also some examples there on how you can uh, use some of the, the scripting in Excel to access data from other uh, OSLC sources as well. So that's one thing that I think sometimes is missing as far as what people know it's there or not. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've, uh, I did paste a link to that uh, Git repository to anyone who's interested uh, into the chat. Ayama-san, if you would uh, transfer control back to me. Oh, yeah. Thanks again for the uh, the presentation. I found it highly informative um, and uh, uh, quite quite interesting. I, I think that this you have elements here that uh, should apply to many, many industries and uh, many organizations. Um, I think that... Uh, that well, the focus of the uh, charter for OSLC prompt code is on on these particular uh, use cases uh, 
involved here. There may be some uh, some elements that uh, some learning, some scenarios that we can learn from uh, that uh, other participants may bring out as they review the work that's already been done. Uh, that could lead maybe to a uh, um, you know a look at uh, broader supply chain issues uh, beyond just the uh, software or uh, Actually, into the broader project management uh, beyond that, that, as it applies to uh, the contracted delivery of software supply chain. Uh, right, and so we do have a question uh, exactly on that. So, project management will become a new domain within within OSLC. That is the question, and uh, uh, so I, in uh, as I as I understand. That is the intention. That it may take a, a little bit of growth out of the uh, the work that's being done in the prom code uh, TC, as that is uh, not dealing with all, and it's not chartered to deal with all the aspects of project management, but uh, maybe a kickstart for um, for a group that focuses on on trying to bring in some of the uh, the very well defined project management uh, practices. Uh, from across uh, that uh, that industry or not industry that uh, um, that uh, set of knowledge, um, but so the the prom code uh, work will focus on project management of contract or of you know, contracted delivery for software supply chain. So not everything that uh, that project management uh, deals with will uh, be covered. But as we saw in some of the charts, you know, we do, do deal with uh, KPIs and other, uh, and other traditional project management concepts. And I'll just add into that, Shauna, that there's aspects of project management we've touched on from other domains in the past. So. Uh, the uh, previous estimation and measurement uh, working group, even within change management, we just had the concept of uh, tagging certain dialogues and things as task or plan items. So um, we've we've only touched on some, you know, a minimal set of uh, scenarios to support it. But uh, so there's always been, you know, some support, if you will, for some related project management uh, scenarios. But I think prompt code is a good example of. Of learning more from you know specific needs in in a, in a certain uh, industry, and then seeing how we can apply it more generally or drive this general project management work. Okay, uh, so that's very good. And then one last thing, just before you go, um, I. Briefly, looking a little further ahead to the uh, to June time frame, there will be a election. Uh, steering committee elections will be taking place, and uh, there will be three seats that are um, that are up for election. There's currently a vacant seat. Um, the seat held by Mark Schulte at Boeing will be up for election. But these will be for two-year term, and the seat held by Bola Ratibi will be up for election as well. And uh, the only the only thing necessary to either run in the election or to uh, have a vote in the election is that your organization needs to be a member of the uh, OSLC member section. And uh, so a number, a bit of a call out to some of the organizations who have joined technical committees. Joining a technical committee does not um, does not mean that you are a member of the OSLC member section. You need to send a, or have your primary rep send an email to uh, Scott McGrath, who is the COO of, uh, of OASIS, simply saying that you want to uh, become a supporter of the OSLC member section, and then you would be able to uh, vote in the election or uh, run in the election if you chose to do that. So uh, certainly I encourage uh, those uh, those organizations who have joined OSLCT technical committees to also join the member section and uh, either consider running in that election or certainly voting uh, for that for the uh, people who choose to run in the election. 
the more details will uh, follow that closer to the date. There'll be a call for nominations period and, and uh, all the regular formalities. But uh, just a little bit of a heads up. And so with that, I, again, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Aoyama for the uh, excellent mm -hmm. presentation to introduce us to PromCode, encourage um, those of you who are interested to uh, uh, respond to the call for participation and uh, join that technical committee. As, uh, as Ryan uh, Lloyd from PTC mentioned, you know, one of the uh, important things that organizations can do is provide uh, their perspective on specifications uh, that are in progress so that they are generally implementable and, uh, and uh, useful to the wide variety of uh, uh, end users and the situations that they, those users find themselves in. So certainly this is something that I, I know that the, uh, the, uh, the proposers of prompt code hope, hope will happen. And uh, also the call for participation for the automation technical committee is underway. And if you are interested um, in uh, requirements, architecture, or quality management, uh, you may be, uh, you may want to be involved in the writing of the charter of that if you're highly interested or certainly look for the uh, uh, call for uh, comments when that gets submitted, maybe uh, uh, in March or early April. So thank you, uh, thank you again to Professor Aoyama for uh, staying up late with us in Japan, and uh, also you know thank you for you know, participating in this you know great Yeah, I really appreciate if you are interested in to contribute some code. We are certainly welcome you. So with that, uh, thank you everyone, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, good night in Japan. Uh, Good morning to those who joined in the uh, <laughs> yeah. in the West Coast, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, those of you in Europe will have a good good afternoon, mm. good evening. Mm. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much.